Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and today we are going to continue with the Srimad Bhagavatam playlist. All right, and we reach the first chapter. I mean, we are still in the first chapter of the first canto, and we completed the first four verses, if I am right. And today we are going to start with the fifth verse. It is an amazing verse, like as, like usual. And this is a small verse. The purport is very small. So if time permits, we will also go to the sixth verse. Okay. There you go. And before we recite the Shrimad Bhagavatam, we always... Uh, Offer this prayer Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This prayer is offered three times always, and we can also offer prayers to our preceptors who have bestowed this divine knowledge unto us. All right, Om Agyan Timiran Hasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama. And till now, we saw that the assembly of great sages, including, uh, as we know, Sudh Goswami, he is speaking what he heard from Sukhdev Goswami, who was speaking to Parikshit Maharaj. Okay. So the zoom in, zoom out keeps going on in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. And now Sudh Goswami is sitting in the Naimisharanya forest and he is. I mean, he's speaking all of these. Okay, so now what happens? In the previous verse, we heard that in the fourth verse, once in a holy place in the forest of Naimisharanya, great sages headed by the sage Shaunaka assembled to perform a great thousand year sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. So now, the sacrifice is going to begin and i mean not literally now but very soon it's going to start and now it's like setting the scene okay for the sacrifice so there you go first canto first chapter fifth verse from the shrimad bhagavatam ta ekadatu munayaha pratar huta hutagnaya Sat kritam sutam asinam prapachur idam adaratat adaratat. Okay, the translation is one day after finishing their morning duties by burning a sacrificial fire and offering a seat of esteem to Srila Sut Goswami, the great sages made inquiries with great respect about the following matters so now it's like setting the scene okay so there's some very important things which we need to focus in this verse well we will read the purport but before that there's a word which is written here with great respect okay so whenever we are inquiring anything about spirituality from any religious tradition because ultimately every religious tradition uh, the aim is to make us more spiritual is to take us beyond matter okay the most important principle is to inquire submissively all right in a mood of respect awe and reverence from the guru otherwise we may have thousand questions and we may get a million answers but none of the answers will benefit us okay because if we ask questions in the mood of arguing or trying to prove ourselves or trying to show that we know more than somebody else, then we have missed the essence of spiritual life. Okay. So therefore you will always see that whenever such inquiries are made, see what is going on here by burning a sacrificial fire and offering a seat of seat of esteem to Srila Sutta Goswami, which means the speaker of the Srimad Bhagavatam is always to be uh, given a very high position okay so now of course uh, we nobody is exalted like Sudh Goswami here but that is the mood in which we should uh, hear the Srimad Bhagavatam okay it's not just a historic discourse or a discourse of some religion or 
any any cultural text okay it is purely spiritual as the shrimad bhagavatam is it is a uh, it is known as the amalam puranam which means there is no tinge of materialism into it which means that there is no material motivation behind the shrimad bhagavatam okay which means that there is no statement like if you do this you will go to heaven and you will enjoy or you will you will get more money or you will get a good uh, life partner or so and so okay it is purely related to our spiritual elevation and that is why shrimad bhagavatam is the greatest it is the most pure it is the most elevated of all the scriptures okay it is not just like we say that we are saying that because this is the reason it only talks of the soul which will ultimately benefit everybody okay so now purport begins morning is the best time to hold spiritual activities wow <laughs> the great sages offered the speaker of the bhagavatam an elevated seat of respect called the vyas asan or the seat of shila vyas dev okay Sri Vyas Dev is the original spiritual preceptor for all men. So the seat where the speaker of the Bhagavatam sits, that place is known as what? Fill in the blanks. Vyas Asan. So basically the person who is speaking the Srimad Bhagavatam, he, he is like a representative of Vyas Dev. Okay, so whenever we are about to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam or we are about to even listen from anybody it is very essential that we pray to Vyas Dev first of all okay who is the author of all the Vedic scriptures and especially the Srimad Bhagavatam because he was the one who told this to his son Sukhdev Goswami who in who in turn told it to Parikshit Maharaj and where Sudh Goswami was sitting okay so it is very essential that, and he's also a Shaktyavesh avatar of Lord Vishnu. So it, it is very essential that we fall at his feet and we beg his mercy. Otherwise, we can never understand the Shiva Bhagavatam or the Bhagavad Gita, especially these two books. Okay. So therefore, it is highly essential that we see the person who is speaking the Shiva Bhagavatam as somebody who is a representative of Vyas Dev, okay? And therefore, whenever somebody is speaking, we should not be concerned with who the person is, which means, what is his gender? Is he a male or a female, all right? What is the age of the person? Maybe a five-year-old boy, maybe a 80-year-old man or a lady, whoever, okay? It doesn't matter. Or what, which country the person lives, what is the passport, what kind of, uh, how does the person look or what's the profession of the person how much famous the person is how much good looking the person is or what kind of uh, speech does the person have okay how much uh, how much literate the person is in matters of science physics or chemistry that's none of our business our business is to only see that person as a representative of Vyas Dev, only then we can benefit, okay? Otherwise, we may invest so much time, but we will hardly benefit from the scriptures or by going to spiritual discourses or satsang or whatever you want to call them because we are not seeing the person at a spiritual level. We will only see the person at a material level and we will be judging the person. Oh, look, oh, uh, he works in this company. Maybe he is like this, maybe she is like that. All right, so let us keep all our judgments aside and focus on what the person says. Okay, that is the most important thing whenever you are, we are listening to any Srimad Bhagavatam discourse and the Bhagavad Gita discourse also. All right. So now, Whoever is speaking, the person sits in a Vyasasan, okay? So that is Asan means a place to sit. So Vyas Asan, so it's like a place where Vyasdev sits. So that's why it's known as Vyas Asan. Srila Vyasdev is the original spiritual preceptor of all men. 
he is the original guru he is the adi guru you see of course adi guru at a higher level is balram <laughs> and all other preceptors are considered to be his representatives as in uh, sanskrit they say pratinidhi representative a representative is one who can exactly present the viewpoint of shila vyasdev wow that's a very strong definition a representative is one who can exactly present the viewpoint of shila vyasdev mind blowing statement Shri Vyasdev impregnated the message of Bhagavatam unto Srila Sukhdev Goswami and Shri Sut Goswami heard from heard it from him Shri Sukhdev Goswami okay so Vyasdev's son is Sukhdev Goswami and Sukhdev Goswami said to Parikshit Maharaj which was in uh, heard by Sut Goswami okay and sut goswami is the one who is being given this elevated asan this vyas asan okay because he heard in the parampara he heard in the disciplic succession succession in the authority that is why he is most qualified to speak on the shrimad bhagavatam okay all bona fide representatives of shri vyas dev are in the chain of disciplic succession all the all bona fide representatives of shila vyasdev in the chain of disciple succession are to be understood to be goswamis wow these goswamis restrain all their senses and they stick to the path made by the previous acharyas the goswamis do not deliver lectures on bhagavatam capriciously rather they execute their services most carefully following their predecessors who delivered the spiritual message unbroken to them and there is a word used here capriciously so what does macbook say about this well dictionary says that capricious means given to sudden and unaccountable changes of mood or behavior so goswamis do not deliver lectures on the bhagavatam this way all right so which means that just because they don't feel good today it doesn't mean that you know they will speak something which is contrary to the shrimad bhagavatam okay so goswami means the word like uh, in india many people have this uh, surname goswami okay so many times people think that just by having a, a surname like sharma bharadwaj or goswami we 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 become a brahmin well uh, that's not the definition of a brahmin a brahmin is one who knows the science of spirituality brahma janeti ti brahmin all right and the word goswami means go means the senses okay the sense organs that we have and swami means controller is the lord so generally in this world uh, the people of this world they are godas godas means they are servant they are slaves of their senses okay which means <clears throat> when the tongue dictates i want food then everybody will run to restaurant to eat so many good items okay when the genitals are pushing people will run behind the opposite sex so many affairs scandals so many so much dissension so much pornography in the internet people becoming obsessed with sex more and more day by day and all the senses driving crazy driving everybody mad in this world yes but the goswamis are the ones who are controllers of their senses which means their mind is fully under their control okay so they make the senses do what they want their senses do not make them do what they want okay so that is the meaning of the word goswami so anybody who has full control over his or her senses is actually a goswami irrespective of what surname that person has okay and they do not deliver lectures on the bhagavatam capriciously which means they do not alter the message just for sake of 
their popularity or just to suit their own agenda okay now if somebody is uh, preaching the message of the bhagavatam and is also doing all this nonsense then we have to understand he is actually not in the disciplic succession okay he has not heard in the parampara and that is why he is unaware of how to control his senses and they always follow their predecessors who deliver the spiritual message unbroken to them all right so this is also one of the characteristics that they deliver the spiritual message as it is all right without without changing it or modifying it or without any adulteration all right now the last paragraph of this purport those who listen to the Bhagavata may put questions to the speaker. Questions. <laughs> may put questions to the speaker in order to elicit the clear meaning. But this should not be done in a challenging spirit. Very, 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 very important. One must submit questions with a great regard for the speaker and the subject matter. This is also the way recommended in bhagavad gita one must learn the transcendental subject by submissive oral reception from the right sources therefore these sages addressed the speaker sud goswami with great respect so it's mentioned that this is also the way recommended in the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so where does Krishna say this or does Arjuna say this? Where is this mentioned? Okay, so this is very, very, very famous shloka. Tadvidhi pranipate na pari prasne na sevaya upadek chantite gyanam gyani nastatva darshinaha. Tadvidhi pranipate na pari prasne na sevaya. So this means. Uh, we should humbly inquire to the spiritual master okay not in a mood of arrogance or to prove that the spiritual master doesn't know something to humiliate him in front of others okay like most of the people do like you can see many videos in youtube where such, uh, so many people who pretend to be so smart and they are uh, asking questions to so many spiritual leaders okay or you can also see in the comments but you will see that these people they even though they get the answer they will never be satisfied neither will they even if they are satisfied intellectually but they will never be able to uh, elevate their consciousness spiritually why this is because they are missing the point all right so they are not having humility in them one who does not have humility inside and one who thinks that I am advancing spiritually, well, he is simply in a dreamland. <laughs> all right. So, if humility is not there, then we cannot inquire submissively. All right. And here, there's a very miss, uh, big. Uh, there's a big misconception which people have sometimes. So sometimes uh, many atheists and many scientists and many scholars, many economists, many all the people of this world they argue that uh, whenever it comes to religion or spirituality there is no scope of questions and answers okay which means we can never ask anything we have to just accept whatever it is and you know what if we have some questions can we ask them well the answer is yes you can ask them arjuna does this so in the gita if you see Krishna tells, you know, Vivasvan Manave Praha Manur Ikshvaku Be Bravit. All right. So before I spoke Gita to you, Arjuna, I spoke it to some other personalities. So if you know, then write it in the comments. I already told the names. <laughs> so then Arjuna says, now Arjuna, although he's a great soul, he's a Paramahamsa, he's a liberated being, but when he is participating in the discourse of the Gita he is behaving like as if he is just another person like you and me so then what he does is Arjuna says to ask Lord Krishna that oh, oh my dear Krishna uh, you told that you have you had spoken this no about this knowledge to somebody else before me but then I have a confusion there 
Arjuna says that you you are from my age, you are from my time. We are equals in age. So how is this possible that you have told this to somebody who was there before me? All right. Now, this is what Arjuna means. But if you read the Gita, you will know how he's asking this question. He's not asking this question the way I, I'm telling. What Arjuna is telling is, Arjuna is telling that, my dear Krishna, how am I supposed to understand that you gave this knowledge to somebody by being my equal who uh, came before me, right? So he he's not telling Krishna that, oh, what nonsense are you speaking? How can you speak about the same thing to somebody who was there hundreds, thousands and millions of years before me? How is that possible? Because we are best friends. We are equals. Where, how is it possible that you were alive that time? Arjuna doesn't say like that. Arjuna says, how am I to understand? How should I understand? How can I realize what you are saying? And then Krishna says that, what he says, the entire Gita, then that's how the Gita starts. So the point is, Krishna explains to him and Arjuna asks questions. Okay. So it is not that we cannot ask questions. You can ask a million questions. You can ask thousand, million, trillion questions. I personally have always, uh, always asked uh, so many questions to my gurus. Okay. But the most important point is we have to realize that we we have to be humble and submissive when we ask questions. Otherwise, we can never benefit. We will just be asking questions to the, we will be asking the same question to all the uh, spiritual gurus or whenever we go to some spiritual community, we will you will have this experience either with yourself or you will see others that they will ask the same set of standard questions to every spiritual leader, but still. They don't get satisfaction. Why is that? Because that person should introspect that maybe I am lacking humility. Okay. Now, if you are still not satisfied, that's a separate story. That is fine. It, it's not that you ask a question to somebody and that person's answer must satisfy you. It is not like that. Okay. If you are not satisfied, you can go and ask to somebody. But from our side, we have to make sure that we maintain humility we we are down to earth and only then we can understand and we have to understand that when that person is speaking it is not that that person is speaking himself all right it is he is the representative of vyasdev so anybody who is talking about the shrimad bhagavatam you have to understand that he is like uh, he is almost like a representative. He is a representative, in fact. Okay, so that is why. Imagine if Vyasdev would be sitting in front of you. Would you ask questions like that? Oh, actually, you know, you said this. I think it's like this. Like, no, you do not ask like that. Maybe you will ask. <laughs> but that's not how we should ask. All right. So now, of course, um, I don't need to speak too much on this. I hope you have understood. But. The predicament of this uh, Kali Yuga is that people don't even maintain basic etiquettes when they are attending spiritual discourses or when they are asking questions. There also they will carry their adamance and you know superiority complex or I would say inferiority complex. And then they they can never benefit, you know, because they say the question which you ask should be beneficial for you and for the guru and for the audience also all right it's not that just you are asking your personal questions all right now that you can ask personally when you meet the guru that, that's fine but when we are sitting in a group of people with a group of people then we should ensure that the questions that we ask will also benefit the others only those questions we should be asking in public okay and what to speak of quarreling and fighting and arguing with uh, spiritual leaders that that will never elevate our consciousness in fact the opposite will happen we will degrade down more we will we will go more i mean so low that maybe we can never even come up also all right so ask a million questions there's no problem but just maintain humility and understand that this person 
is a representative of Vyasdev and please respect anybody who is speaking about uh, spirituality or divine knowledge especially the Gita or the Bhagavatam all right only then we can benefit ourselves and everybody including the universe we can benefit the trees the plants the animals the birds anybody all right so i hope uh, we will not cover the next verse in this video we will do it in the next video all right because it became very long and because uh, i i thought that i will just ex uh, i will just read all this and i will not explain but then i thought this is very 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 important these are these these are the fundamental staging verses of the shrimad bhagavatam all right so if we do these properly then only we will be able to set the right mood the right tone for the shrimad bhagavatam okay otherwise we will miss the point all right so Thank you very much and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then you can go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me and yes God is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him definitely okay thank you so much